Inflammation. Inflammation of our bodies. There are many foods that we eat that encourages and causes inflammation of the body. Inflammation can cause many diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attack in our bodies. So it's always best to try and eat anti-inflammatory foods like raw salad, raw greens and food which promotes anti-inflammation of the body. So today I've been fasting on total anti-inflammatory foods. In this bowl I've got a bowl of sesame seeds and they're very good anti-inflammatory whole foods. And there's my ginger tea. There's no caffeine in this ginger. No additives, just raw root ginger. And my um, meal is just a basic salad because today I'm fasting I'm having a fast all week the whole week the first week in February I'm fasting my body I know some people disagree with fasting but it's just an experiment for me fasting on lettuce tomatoes raw carrots water lemon and lime and orange and boil ginger that's going to be my diet basically for the whole week which I'm going to try and stick to and remember like I said it's just an experiment to see how I feel correction this is my fasting non-inflammatory diet for March I said February before it's I meant March this is the beginning of March the years are going so fast <laughs> I've just made a mistake so March this is my fasting diet for the week a lot of nuts like sesame seeds ginger orange lime and lemon freshly squeezed lots of steam and saunas I'm reducing my exercise this week and I'm giving my body a break and I'm fasting and detoxifying the body completely but people don't realize the damage inflammation causes to the body it's where your immune system is overactive when we get a sprain from a fall we tend to get an inflammation which is normal to protect our bodies and what our body's defenses but when you get ordinary inflammation from eating wrong foods it's not good I definitely think raw is the best way man raw is definitely the best way raw or just um, at no meats no meat is the first port of call having no meat in the diet no poison 
or like I say, convenience food. I find when you go out for a meal with people or you socialise, there's so much pressure to eat in restaurants and so much pressure to eat the menus. And then you sort of tend to deviate. You see that lovely, delicious meal and the menus and you're out socialising and the smell of the food and you just tend to eat it. People say you must have fun in this life. You only live, you only live once. Of course, you definitely only live once. So your body has to be looked after. Because what it is, is a long-term effect of eating these foods. Long-term. It's such a slow process and it gathers on your body. And it piles all that mutton on your body. This is what I'm going to call fat on the human body. I call it mutton. All around your face, your gut. Mutton. And it's people who can't exercise, they don't exercise at all. And this mutton gathers until it turns to cancer. You've got to exercise and you've got to be honest with yourself and you've got to face it. Meat is definitely no good for the human body. Meat, definitely no good. They inject these cows with hormones, steroids to force the growth. The food industry is just making money off people and fooling people. Real bad. As soon as you walk into a, a main Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda or Walmart, you have an abundance of bad health, an abundance of good health. But people just haven't got the knowledge how to choose. I'm not knocking the big stores for not having any healthy food, but there is a lot of bad foods in these large supermarkets. I prefer small farm markets to shop. The small farm places where you get a lot of natural um, foods that's not mass produced. The non mass produced foods are the best. What else can I say? Eat whole foods. Eat whole and live longer and live an anti inflammatory lifestyle. I'll be making more videos on this anti-inflammatory um, way of living and how you can avoid inflammation in the body. Fasting our bodies does not mean that we have to starve our bodies. In my case, all it means for me is restricting a certain amount of food and type of food that goes into my body and it also means giving my body a rest sometimes the body needs a rest just like a runner or a trainer who trains he has a rest period in order for the body to perform better so this is my rest I'm fasting for one week and by fasting I mean just restricting my um, consumption of meat to zero, absolutely no meat whatsoever, and eating anti inflammatory foods in very low amounts. Today I've eaten nothing, it's just one meal I've had, and this is the meal lettuce, boiled root ginger, sesame seeds. And I've had freshly squeezed orange, lemon and lime with water. So that's my diet for today. And my body is resting today and resting all week. And I'm going to see how I feel when I make a video about it, how I'm feeling after the week. And this is not a diet of mine, it's just an experiment of mine. Another thing I want to mention... It's very important to exercise as well as eat anti-inflammatory foods. Exercise reduces inflammation of the body. So remember, exercise is very important for reducing fat and relaxing the body and developing the right chemicals to destroy inflammation. Inflammation, bacteria, 
diabetes, heart attack is very bad for our bodies. All these trans fats that goes into foods, gluten, dairy is deadly. Deadly poison. And this is why people are puffed. It makes you puffed. All these foods, all these beautiful cakes you eat, it makes you puffed. All that kind of food is no good. Sugars, no good. What you can do with ginger is put this this drink has to cool down. So you can put the ginger in there and you get a concentrated dose of ginger. Normally you can make two lots of ginger with this one uh, ginger root boil. But what I'm gonna do is put the ginger in here, so by the time it's by the time it's cooled down, I've got a double dose strength of ginger. It will take 20 minutes to cool this ginger down. So this is my boiled root ginger. I decided to leave the ginger root in the, the drink, in the water, so it cools down. This is anti-inflammatory food. Anti-inflammatory. I am absolutely starving. It is now a mental challenge, this fasting. Fasting and diet is a mental challenge in itself. What I'm used to eating, I've cut down. And all I've had today is one orange, three lemons, and two limes. And for my dinner, I've had a whole iceberg lettuce, not iceberg lettuce, a whole lettuce. I don't know what the name of the lettuce is, but you saw it in the video. I've had about four tablespoons of sesame seeds and one portion of boiled root ginger. I am absolutely starving and this is a mental challenge and this is why I'm, why I'm vlogging it. It's just an experience to feel how my body is detoxing and how, what effect by reducing this food has on me. The effect it has on me um, being an athlete, he makes you a bit weaker. You feel a bit. If I had to go and train down the gym, if I had to go and throw punches in the boxing gym, I couldn't train. Not on this. I have to have carbs to train. So carbs is definitely important to eat. But I'm fasting for the week. 
I'm going to let you know how my journey goes. But right now, I'm so hungry. I'm thinking of sweet potatoes right now, with carrots, with cabbage. And I'm thinking about, thinking about I'll be honest with you, how I'm feeling now, I'm thinking of a small bit of fish with that as well. A small bit of mackerel with that food. This is what I'm thinking about right now. It's always best to be honest about your diet with people and not just put stuff on there and then behind closed doors you munch a whole massive punch of pork or chocolate. I'll tell you how it is and my experience is I'm feeling absolutely starving. But at the same time I feel this sense of cleanliness in my body and relief. I feel relief on my organs inside. Sometimes you should have a bit of relief from eating and rest the body from eating. Now this, this is not my permanent diet, but this is just an experiment on starvation fasting. Because fasting is a form of starvation, but controlled. Because I'm not exactly neglecting all food. I've had the juices, the vitamin C, and I've had a bit of protein from a sesame seed, and I've had the lettuce to eat, and the ginger, which is another good herbal drink. Anti-inflammatory is the way I'm going to go. Anti-inflammatory foods. And this is what I'm going to do to reduce myself right down in weight, and be cleaned on the inside, make my body function. I'm going to actually be a better athlete than I was. And by going totally raw, some people say raw is not the complete way to go, some say it is. I say cleaner foods are much better. But people say you can live on some cooked foods and mix it with raw. This is what I believe right now. I believe if you mix a bit of cooked foods with raw, there's no harm in that. But raw foods, you'll get the maximum benefit of nutrition. So if you're going right into the deep end, you want to go to raw. But the thing is, can you sustain raw in the real world with a society of people and friends and family that constantly push wrong foods in front of your face? Being it not raw, it can be cooked foods, but it's not raw, it's still in your face. And it's even hard enough when they're throwing, you go out for birthday parties and they're chucking everything at you. We just isolate ourselves for now because it's easier. It's not fun, but it's a lot easier. So how I feel right now about the raw diet is I don't know about whether I can do it. It's not that I'm doubting myself. I know it's a tough challenge, so I'm not having an open mind on it. But it's a direction I want to go because I know the raw food will totally heal my body inside. Even though I'm fit, I can set a thousand squats, a thousand sit-ups, etc. Run 13 miles with no problem. It's just what this um, raw vegan said on one of her videos. You can be fit and strong, but how clean is inside of your body? And I want a clean, cancer-free body. There's one thing I do know, is compared to normal people, my body is a lot cleaner than the normal than normal people because exercising and fitness at the level at which I do it gets rid of a lot of toxins and crap you eat in your body. Let's take a look at let's take a look at say for instance Floyd Mayweather. I watched a, vid a video on Floyd Mayweather. It's called All Access Floyd Floyd Mayweather versus Madonna 2. Remember all access Floyd Mayweather versus Madonna 2 and it's on YouTube and you see Floyd Mayweather eating two Big Macs and he's also eating drinking a massive uh, coke etc and he regularly regularly drinks coca-cola yet still his body is ripped he is world champion and unbeaten so there you have it he's healthy he's world champion and unbeaten and he weighs about ten and a half stones and keeps his weight steady all the time so this is what I say you can be fit and strong and still perform 
But could you imagine what Floyd Mayweather would be like if he went on a raw diet? And this is the question I have. If you could do raw, could you imagine how strong and fit you would be? But let's get back to this fasting of mine. I'm absolutely starving. I'm on an anti-inflammatory diet which contains whole foods and nothing else but whole foods. And I'm facing up to myself, facing up to facts that you've got to be more serious about your, your life for the long term. It's not for now. It, I'm thinking long term. How I'll be when I'm 100. All the food I've eaten now, how it'll affect me when I'm 100. My grandmother will be 106 years old this year and she's got all her bodily functions. She's strong and she's healthy. She lives in St. Lucia, Caribbean and is so healthy. It's unbelievable. And I want to follow her in her footsteps. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog and this is just a record of me, how I'm feeling. Absolutely damn starving. And I'm going to have a glass of water, a pint of water in about half an hour. A pint of pure water. I've had the ginger, a pint of water. But no food.